Hey, what's up guys? So, you remember a while back I was talking about doing a bunch of review videos on things which I think are really, really great deals and they don't get reviewed much. Um, so, yeah, we're going to continue with that little theme and today we're going to talk about these guys. So this is a chain ring. Um, if you guys have been shopping around eBay, um, you'll probably have seen a bunch of these flying around for under $15, either a Decca's brand or a Snail brand. Um, I think they're pretty darn similar, but let's talk them, right? This is actually a 36 tooth oval. 36 tooth oval Decca's narrow wide. Um, 104 BCD, so standard, old standard mountain bike spacing. Um, and I also have a 34 oval on the operator, and that's a Snail. And a 30 oval, no, 30 round on the giant trance slash anthem. The trantham, because that's a trance, and that's an anthem, and it's a mutt. Um, <laughs> but anyways, let's talk about these guys. So, uh, you can find these on eBay for, like, under $15. And I think they're pretty solid. It's a great deal. They last pretty long, actually, surprisingly. And for 15 bucks, you can't really go wrong. Um, com seeing as you could get a race face one for like what 40 bucks or something um, these are narrow wide so you can only run these as one buy um, which ain't that great of a deal if you're trying to like get a chain ring for your gravel bike but you need a range for the high speed and the low speed stuff or a road bike but these are actually not bad I have not had issues of dropping at all running this um, when running with a clutch and uh, a little top guide. I'll, yeah, I'm running a bunch of these snail and Decca's. No, these are Decca's top chain ring, uh, chain guides, and I'll, I'll I'll show you guys that in a bit. But um, running this setup, I have never had an issue. Um, I think there was once I just like loaded my my bike home and I didn't realize to drop the chain um, when I put a bike back in the house um but it was like once and it's never happened on a trail um i think they're pretty darn secure man um i could probably like give you a little drop test to see how this works later with and without a clutch um but anyways this is a 36 oval so what it is is that on the wide side it's an it's a width of a 38 and the narrow side it's the width of a 34 um can I tell you the difference in pedaling? I mean, the whole argument with running oval or isometric chain rings is that, you know, you get, like, uh, more more efficient spin or whatever. It makes it easier to climb because in your weak dead spots, you're running, like, a smaller chain ring, and for your downstrokes, you're getting a bigger chain ring. Um, I can't tell you if I can feel the difference, honestly, because I've only ever run these on mountain bikes, and with those, it's... Most of the times, it's just hammer. I'm not, like, sitting down spinning 90, 90 RPM cadence for, like, five hours on a road bike. So I can't really tell the difference. The only time I've, I've felt the difference is when I actually mounted the uh, chain ring in the wrong direction. Then you can really feel the difference because you're, like, putting the hammer down. Whoop! It just goes under you, which is kind of weird. But putting it on the right direction, I don't feel the difference. Um, but... The main reason why I run an oval is so that I can get a, I can get the range, um, the speed, the, the high end range, high end speed for, of a 38 tooth with the weight of a 36 tooth, because I'm a weak meat. But this is what this is. So this one actually comes out to, oh yeah, these are advertised as 7075 alloy. Um, which is, I've never heard of 7075, only heard of 7076, but, you know, it seems to be pretty tough, but these are pretty light too. So this comes out to, with the dirt and all, 36 oval decas, and let's see, 62 grams, or 63 grams of the dirt and all. So, not too bad, not too bad at all, it's actually a pretty light <laughs> chain ring, um, which is kind of cool. So what we have here 
is that's a so these are the decas ones, right? And then that's a snail. So that's a 34 oval. Um, and they look really similar aside from the graphics. Let's see if you can get both in there. Yeah, they're pretty similar aside from the graphics. Um, however, I don't know if this is because this is a new model or not. Um, I just got a 32th round um, from Snail, which is this guy. And these actually were a little bit different. Um, the reason why is because I didn't need a female, a female part for the bolt. What it was, was there were already, already threads tapped into the chain ring. And there was a little bit of a, it was machined out to be a little thicker as opposed to just a regular, a regular, uh, single chain ring so you didn't need to run a shorter female and shorter bolts or anything your original bolts just thread right in there which i thought was pretty darn cool um because usually when you swap out from a double to a single chain ring or whatever you have to deal with looking for a shorter female and a shorter bolt but didn't didn't need to on this guy which is pretty cool the old ones however like on this one, I actually do did need a female, female side, on the back because there were no threads, threads um tapped into it, and I think I needed a shorter one too for a, an actual single chain ring setup as opposed to using using a dub, a double setup. So that's that. Um, this is what it looks like up close. See how it's just not threaded. And that one is. So that's cool. They come in, they come in a bunch of colors and stuff too. So, um, yeah. This one I've had some miles on it, and you can see there is a little bit of wear, but it's not too bad. It's an old chain too, so it probably isn't wearing as well <laughs> as it should. This chain actually came off that bike when I put a new chain on that bike. Yeah. So that's that. All right. Now let's talk about these chain guides, which I mentioned earlier. So this one is a Decca's chain guide. It's just a top guide. I mean, with a um, with a clutch nowadays, you real you don't really have the bottom bouncing around as much. So the clutch and the narrow eye really keeps the chain pretty secure, which is pretty sick. So just for extra security, I just have a top chain guide, and I've haven't had an issue at all, aside from that one time, like loading the bike in the house. Um, and it came off, I didn't even notice it come off, probably just me like picking it off from the car or whatever and doing something weird with it. Um, and it came off, but aside from that on the trail, it's never ever happened while I'm riding a bike. It's pretty darn secure, which is pretty sick. Um, so this one is a ISCG mount one. It, just mounts two bolts uh, can you see that one right there and one on the bottom it mounts to my original iscg mounts and then this top guide slides up and down and then you basically run spacers to get the right chain line for boost spacing or whatever and this is a 150 mil rear rear, rear spacing in the back old uh, dh standard um yeah no issues whatsoever. I didn't even have to run a spacer on that. Uh, yeah. So that's the ISUG mount one. It's really simple. These were really light. They came out to be like 26 grams or something. Uh, which is pretty cool. And they were also like about $15 or so. So they were also pretty cheap compared to like getting an actual MRP or E13 one. Which will cost you like 50, 60 bucks for pretty much the same thing. Um, I think a bunch of these Chinese companies used to manufacture for some of some companies and then their contracts ran out or something and then they, they decided to just rebrand their stuff, um, which is kind of shitty, I know, but dude, some of the stuff I think works pretty darn solid. If you're on a budget, it's, it's actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's a deck as one. I know there are companies like four years and stuff making kind of like the same shit. Um, yeah, 
Okay, now on the Trantham. This is the same chain guide right here, but this one is a BB mount. So it actually sandwiches. Can you see that? See that little red thing right there? It actually sandwiches itself between the BB cups. So you do need outboard bearings for this. You can't really run. Well, actually, I don't know. I've never tried it with like a regular square taper or like micro spline hit uh, bottom bracket. But this is just a regular outboard bearing uh, bottom bracket threaded BSA standard. Um, and I'm running this with only one spacer, only one spacer on the drive side because the chain guide essentially works as another spacer and I'm running another spacer on the non-drive side. So it becomes this whole standard spacer thing. Um, yeah, both the ISCG5 and the bottom bracket mount chain guides were at the same price. I weighed it and it was like 26 grams or something in the ISCG mount. I totally forgot to weigh the bottom bracket one, um, which is totally my bad, but whatever. So these these chain rings and these chain guides are pretty darn um reliable i think um i would definitely seriously check these out i mean i know like they're not as i mean you're not gonna get like a brand name like recognition or whatever but these work just fine i think and especially if you're th you're talking about like stuff which are essentially uh you know they wear out right chain rings Dude, 15 bucks can't go wrong. Um, yeah, and you guys have seen me talk about, like, getting cheap cassettes. Like, the Sunray stuff is really solid. Uh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I think, yeah, like, there's really no point in getting a really, really expensive cassette or chain ring, I don't think, because they wear out and you have to replace them anyways. So, how secure are these? Well, let's, uh... Let's uh let's 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 check him out. I'm gonna stop this video, maybe put it in slow motion capture video, and then test out uh, a just a real little quick drop test between the giant Trantham and this one has no clutch. It's just a regular shadow, and on my park operator, and this one does have a clutch. And we'll see how much it how much uh, it bounces and how secure it really is. Um, as I've mentioned before, on the operator, never had an issue. On the Trantham, the Giant, I haven't really ridden yet to to test out how secure it is. I might need to get a clutch, but for the kind of riding I think I'm going to be doing, I think the top guide is enough. And the shadow springs are actually pretty tough, so. Oh, I'm also running uh, 1142 in the back for that bike, and also 1142 in the back in that. And that's a 34 tooth oval. That's a 30 tooth round. I should mention that this one I am running it with a wolf tooth road link, and this one I'm running it with a goat link. Sometimes running wide range gearings like this, especially when you're not really designed for it. Like um, I had chain issues actually when I was running just a regular XT and I, in order to get enough chain length for the 42 tooth and my 34 oval, um, I would have to run a pretty long chain. And because of that, when I put it in the small cog on the back, I would have really like not enough chain tension. Um, so sometimes things like that can happen, and that's why the goat link, which essentially like pushes the derailleur back a little bit, which lets you run a longer chain. Um, so I know with like roadies and hardtails and all you cross country guys, you guys are always like, yeah, man, just run the shortest chain possible, right? Because lightweight or whatever. Um, I kind of. So my video kind of got cut short for some reason. Oop, text. But yeah, my video kind of got cut short for some reason in between that my little thought and explanation why I run the longest chain possible in most of my bikes. Um, so I find on suspension bikes, I like to try and run the longest chain possible so that my suspension is still nice and lively and, and active. Um, because the total amount of chain growth is 
chain growth ratio is a lot smaller ratio wise with the total amount of uh, chain there is. So that way you don't get as much pedal kickback and stuff and your suspension stays nice and active. Which is why a lot of the times now you see a lot of suspension designs, especially especially downhill bikes with the chain growth they have and on high pivot designs, they run an idler pulley so they can run like an extremely long chain. Um, as opposed to roadies and cross country guys and any rigid bike in the rear end, um, you run as short a chain as possible for because the pedal kickback actually helps you propel the bike forward and stiffens up the suspension for when you're pedaling and you get crisper shifting and lighter weight. Um, so just wanted to finish that thought and uh, now we're going to fast forward to the videos where uh, you get to see the slow-mo videos of the chain bouncing up and down with clutch and without clutch. Peace out. Giant Thranthum. Smallest cog. No clutch. Kona Park Operator, smallest cog, clutch. Kona Park Operator, smallest cog, no clutch.